So, this is a picture of rotations from Wikipedia with the IJK vectors and negative ones and their, co their commutation. This is an inc incredibly complex way to look at this, to view rotations. Sure, the, the math is all good. This is better. Um, but just forget all that. Forget all of that. So we're going to start there. A rotation can be represented with a gyroscope. It has an axis through its rotor and it points in a direction and for a certain change around the wheel from a, from a starting point in this point in this case the green line then the then the red line can be you know marked as an increasing angle around the the gyroscope so this would be Ideally, what you'd want is to be able to take a rotation frame and rotate it to another rotation frame in a smooth fashion and be able to just have a position for this, add some iterative vector, and end up with this position. So that would, might look something like this, where all the axes get moved in a certain direction. That would lead you to think that there was a maybe an axis of rotation this way that all the axes were rotating around. So if we represent that axis in an XYZ uh, coordinate system, then it would point in this direction and have a, a certain length. That would represent the, the certain amount of turn around, around that axis. And you could add another vector off the end of that of a certain length in a direction and that's going to be an, another axis um, that then this would rotate around this way and so this line would sort of fall backwards which if I draw an arc is kind of backwards because this is actually going around uh, more up as it's translating and this is going more towards the front I guess this is um well it's it's already down a ways so I guess this is actually This would be more like a, a direction like this. And then this line would arc. Something like that. And then this arc is actually, oops. More like this too. So now this is more of a back sweeping motion around this. And if I was to just draw that axis in here, um, lines would be somewhere in like that with a direction around it. Kind of like. So you'd have just from that position to this other position. Um, and that's about as simple as rotations are. I have some really old experiments <laughs> where 
the one axis would get all the way to the end, but then the composition of the other axes wouldn't actually reach to the end. So this is this is another way of kind of looking at rotations, that there's a sphere, and for some point on the North Pole, at, at one point, you mark that point, and then you can draw an arc that's in a great circle around that, um, and for some length you end up at a position. So, you know, the... As the position f steps from this point to this point, you know, the green line is a normal, and the red line is to the right. It's normally at the tangent to the curve, the tangent to the r circle of rotation, except in the, in the case where the circle is not actually a great circle, although in reality it is. Um, when it's actually computed, it only ends up as a small circle at that. So in this case, I have two circles, one that is on the great circle, and another le leaves at 90 degrees and comes back around to here. And then that causes a rotation of, well, basically zero degrees to get to there, but effectively twists around this point 180 degrees. Um, more combinations of lines. This is one sector of the rotation coordinates scaled to real space because when you have an x, y, and z that's 2 pi, 2 pi, 2 pi, that's actually a, a distance of 6 pi from the origin along that vector. So instead of being somewhere in the middle here, it elongates the, the translation cube, the coordinate system. So it's, it's, it's really hard to make a, sol a solid shape, but you can clearly see from the pattern of the colors, because these are all drawn with the RGB axes, so depending on their current alignment, you get a certain combination of their colors mixed together. And you can clearly see that there's regular circles in that when projected, when when stretched into rectangular space. Um, and that's all confusing, I'm sure. What do you mean stretched into rectangular space? Well, like, some math puzzles I was trying to propose before is that you have a great circle, and that for that great circle, on some point of it, you have a great circle that's on the outside. And at some point of it, you have a point you're trying to reach. When you consider the arcs of those circles, this is basically just showing the axes of rotations of each of these circles. This is showing a sideways view of this circle as it translates along this diagonal line, which is one half of the arc here. Um, the normal of the plane of rotation that the coordinate system goes around is at one half of the uh, arc length. I don't know why. In the end, that didn't uh, factor into the, the mathematics of this. <coughs> of the situation. So, um, this is slowly stepping this great circle around so that the same point is ended up here, but you end up with a different path to that point. So when you get to that point, you have a different twist. And then this is a sideways view of that. So if you took this plane and made it this, you know, like this, then it steps out slightly for each of these circles until it's a perfect 90 degree perpendicular to that. And I was trying to figure out the rate at which this curve happens. Um, but that's another story. 
Uh, those are my circles, elongated coordinates, and, inter and these complex rotations. So I made this model program that I'm playing with for a while. It's kind of a composite of a lot of ideas. If I could pause this for a second, I can't pause, I think. So, I'm going to turn off all these. And show this. Don't show this. Show this. And then, so this is my normal ball. So f the green lines are up at any point on the ball. And then the red and blue, the red is right and the blue is forward. And that determines your direction on, on this location. Yes, as I'm saying right and forward, you can't actually make that happen with how this is drawn. Unfortunately, this 3JS framework that I'm doing is a left-handed coordinate system. And so all of my rights show as lefts. But this is just natural rotations, where I just set the angle around the, the pole around that circle. But that causes kind of a chaotic pattern. It's not really. Like from this pole, all of these are um, square. So you have the rights and the forwards all kind of going in a rectangular path. So you end up with a grid right on the, right on the pole of your directions. As that pro progresses around the sphere, all the, all the blue lines, all the forwards take you in that direction, and the red ones take you in this direction, but, they, but the red ones curve. And the blue ones kind of ended up, I can't seem to find it, they end up all going in th into this line and then diverging out kind of spirally. And the, and the blue ones and the red ones do the same from the sides. Um, and so the whole point of this was to start studying, okay, so for this point, how do I turn the point? Um... Wow, don't show those. Don't show those. So, f f this slider controls um, the angle e each one is twisted around that same normal. So if you notice, for all these locations, the normal does not change, but the 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 spin around the axis does. And I can just normalize these and set this back to zero. Zero. And then all the blue lines are latitude and the uh, red lines are longitude. So basically your forward direction is always around an equator band, the equatorial sort of band, uh, even on the poles. But then like, as you move forward, then you're not colliding with the pole, um, really on either end. So it seemed like a, a good way to model rotations in a game, so that as I'm going forward, I don't run into the singularity point at the end. Although, in rotation space, this doesn't actually have a pole. Um, if I show that and do show rotation coordinates, this is all the coordinates in rotation space. that this sphere represents. <laughs> I'll get back to that. Um, so
So each of these is an axis of rotation, and then there's, as it leaves the origin and goes out, the angle around that axis changes. So all of these are just fixed rotations along some axis for some amount. And um, that changes depending on the twist of things, of course. So the coordinates don't actually look like that either. Um, this is the real coordinates. Uh, because of how rotations work, you know, if you go this way, and then this way, and then this way, it's go this way and then this way, it's not the same as going this way and then this way. I, you know, each point relative to itself is really a new translation. Um, and the normalized tangents may make this really neat curve that shifts around kind of neat. Um, This is actually... Okay, but if I normalize that to a two-norm, then it all looks like curves. So it looks like you'd have to do, like, work to step around these curves. Right? Because they're all really nice, round, spherical curves. But in reality, they're... Mm, still curves. I need to do... Yeah, I don't know. They're still curves. <laughs> They're really lines, and when the transition hits the edge of a, the intersection of the plane, then it it makes a direction change. But um. I don't know. That's about all I can say about that sort of thing. I have this basis map, which if you zoom in at each point is a uh, rotation frame. The steps between each one are, are kind of big. You can sort of see down the axis uh, how they twist helically. Um, Maybe more properly, you can see this way. That along each of those paths is, is sort of the same sort of translation. And um, this is unscaled rotation coordinates. So there's a max of 2 pi here. So when your angle is added, it's just added. It's not the square root. Um, which makes it look like this. And then trying to find these curves uh, along this space in some tangent of chord of that sphere is really difficult. But you can really just add these, add these rotations together and get a reasonable output. If I don't fix these and I set raw angles, and I don't keep inertia, and I don't show this. I don't show any of these. And I just show a path. For some path, leaving an origin, I can set the angle of that around plus or minus 45 degrees right now. And twist it that way. The path now is currently leaving on the Y line, so if I don't turn this, then this is just a twist. So leaving from here is just twisting the frame along that line. 45 degrees. Whereas I can change the X and the Y, or put them both together, and then twist along that. 
And then the next frame, I'm not using anything from this initial one other than well, I'm iterating back to back to zero. So this is the target rotation for this new frame that I want to set up. And in this case, I'm going to go very to the right. And I'm going to go to the left. So where we left and went that way, we're now entirely reversing that and going the other direction. Um, but that's kind of a radical change because I'm just, I'm going back to zero instead of keeping this in this motion. If I, if I start with that motion, then all the lines in that path that don't have any rotation themselves, um, are the same. If at some step I get some rotation, that now my curvature changes and, I, and I'm not go rotating and going in that direction. <coughs> and that same rotation happens if I change this base rotation. Um, I am showing the rotation coordinates, but they're pretty small now. So if we zoom into here, this first point controls this point, and then off of that is this. So if I move this, those other lines stay in, in the same direction. And those lines have an axis, axis of rotation, and that axis is shown for each of these. Um, So as I change that axis, then actually the direction of that line is changing. There, so this line and this line are in, should be in the same direction. But they're kind of, they're kind of close. So if I set up some arbitrary path into the future, um, and then change the base conditions, they all sort of stay relative to that location. So it looks like, you know, rotating around this arm is still relative to the end location of, of that coordinate. I wonder if I should change the scale of these slightly. Um, if I'm not so concerned with that, and I just want to show... the rotations, then I actually have these planes that are set up that the X slider controls the X, the Y controls the pivot around that direction, and the Z is a twist around around the table. And then this is showing the coordinates in rotation space that each of these are. So I, as I move this, the other motions I can take for my Y and Z from that point are are limited, are are different than what you know you might have. If I don't fix the arms, keeping inertia is actually good. Um, then this way I, I can actually set, you know, the actual XYZ sliders of these. So if I set this to something, something reasonable, like that, and then add another rotation, and then add another rotation, and then add some more rotations, and then move this base rotation. All those in-between rotations are still relatively the same, and I'm, you know, they're just being added to the ends. 
if I you know extend the coordinates so that you can see them and get some various offsets then as, as I'm moving this this base point all the other points that are attached to it are still related relatively the same and the, the whole system rotates basically the same um, if I start with this and I go back to the beginning some rotations can also be modeled as like uh, two frames. So you have a, a frame that pivots around the y-axis and a frame that that's mounted on that pivots around the x-axis. So you can set these. And th this would be sort of like a uh, labyrinth maze board. And I'm not going to mess with the z. But I can, inside I have more frames. So I have that frame which is that frame on the outside and can relatively rotate all those and that's showing all their rotation coordinates appropriately the this base one um see if i use fixed then show x, y rotation doesn't work right. Um, so this is that the this frame is attached to the outside first. I can also reverse that so that this frame is attached to the outside and then the inside frame. So the composite of doing x and then y, you know, sets up the planes in that direction. And doing y and then x sets them up in that direction. In this case, it looks kind of the same. But if I exaggerate this, then the results are not really the same at all. So you have a plane that's, that's going this direction. So if I show the arms, okay, well those aren't, those don't follow the planes. Um, and then this is a halfway in between. So instead of doing always X and Y, which puts the green plane about here, and then always doing y and then z, which puts the green plane about here. There should be a point about here. Uh, I guess it's stretched the other way. So this corner is this corner. And then stepping, taking short steps in between is the mechanical step. But like if you do 45 degrees and 45 degrees, on that red plane, oh, I'm not showing it. Uh, if I do 45 degrees and 45 degrees, then this, then the composite mechanical is short from that. It's um, square root of two over two, or the square root of two difference. The real rotation ends up taking you all the way to 90 degrees. But for that I have to set raw angles and don't use fixed arms. Setting these options sets a bunch of other options behind the scenes so that from your 45-45 you actually do end up in a 90 degree situation. And I can continue that rotation. And then 45, 45, 45, and then the board is actually flipped upside down 
or 180 degrees from its initial rotation, which really makes dealing with rotations very natural, actually. But these are all unscaled. So these are setting raw angles and and, com and just showing the raw output. It's not fixed in any way. Like these are computed differently. And then there's this one. But then notice the rotation curves. Oh, I uh, see. I changed modes here because I'm fixed arms now. Okay, the difference between fixed arms is that when I set this, that there's a certain constraint that makes it so I can only choose a subset of these y coordinates. Instead of being the linear lines that setting absolute values are, it now tr travels l around a curve. But this provides a smoother transition between multiple frames. So when I scale this, they all scale appropriately. So under, you know, small regions, these curves look like this. If I extend these out some, then these curves are much more circular. So then when I have another vector off of those, or more, then all of these, you know, normally straight lines look like curves of circles and bounces and stuff. When really, they're working just fine. You know, I can just smooth iterate this. And, um, but these lines inside are actually straight lines. You know, the path that I'm taking from one rotation to the next is just a straight path. And then the curves that you actually follow in one normal coordinates are often very straight lines themselves, except where they pass pass plane, the, the origin plane. Um, let me reset this. So if I show some others and set them kind of off zero. a larger range. So now some of these shapes you can actually start to see not in this. In this when I change the, the rotation then that curve starts to look like that curve. I guess that's kind of subject to where the center one is, too. So 
So these are in scale to, oh, see and then in 2 norm, everything looks like nice circles. But they're not, because these lines aren't circles, they're, they're actually lines. To iterate from one place to another, that line ends up, this line, ends up being the axis of rotation of, of, of that rotation. So if that's an axis, that's that green line axis right there. And it doesn't look like that's the axis that it's rotating around. Oh, but it's got such a, a steep angle here. It's kind of strange. Using fixed so to totally sidetrack that and go back to something else. We want the arms which are just going off in a straight line because they're going straight. And we want to keep inertia and we want to add acceleration. So if I add a little bit of acceleration and then rotate this because now it's there, then every tick the same rotation happens. So from the slider I've added 3.9 degrees rotation that now everything will take. I can cancel that out if I apply the same in negative. So now I have an acceleration line that's just additive XYZ sort of. What am I doing? I'm setting raw angles on this. So if I change my initial rotation, everything else stays relatively the same because it's adding a new acceleration. And the rotation coordinates of that are just these lines. And I can scale it by time. That, you know, if I want a smaller or larger time increment that I'm looking at. Um, So you can end up with these sort of helical paths. Yeah, like that. They're all relevant. 
relative to some initial acceleration. And, and these slider curves, although they're small, you know, oh, well, they get progressively longer because each addition, yeah. So if I want to stop. It's not such a good example of that. I can, um, I did play with some options so that I add using two norm so that if I show this, then in two norm, there's they're straight lines. But then those lines don't actually add up to the correct target. Which I thought was kind of interesting. It was like, well, that kind of explains why um, and it, it's not even that they're discontinuous on a small range. They just I don't know how to say that. Don't add 2 norm. If I scale the 2 norm, now I'm getting nice curves, actually except I'm in, in a small range. So for a time scale, you could also like uniformly set a position and then make all the things in that line go to that position at once. Uh, let me turn that. But like, so at one second, I'm almost back to initial, but then if I actually reverse time and try and go backwards, it ends up in a in totally different arrangement. So, you know, the absolute value of time is not is not really the same. Oops. I'm going up to, this is towards zero, and then this is from zero into the future. Until we get to point kind of down into the left a little bit, well, down and into the screen. If we unwind back to zero, and backwards, then it's kind of pointing I don't know, it's kind of a perpendicular, instead of going down this way, it's going up that way. So maybe there is something to, you know, because that's pointing up actually. I don't know, time reversed rotations don't work.
So, I don't know, that's kind of a high level of what all these things do. It doesn't really explain any of the math or any kind of deep explanation.